Hey guys, it's Cece. What up? And Brian. And we are going to do a little bit of book shopping and we're gonna hit up some bookstores that we didn't have in Utah. So we're gonna hit up Value Village first and then we're gonna go to Half Price Books and it's gonna be great. Super great. <laughs> What number are you thinking of? 69, dude. Hello, we finished book shopping. I have a stack of books to show you and instead of including it in a regular haul, I thought I would sit here in my room and do them all in a separate haul. Just like a very chill, conversational almost haul of all of these books that I got at uh, Value Village and Half Price Books. I got more books at Half Price Books than I did at Value Village, even though they were a little bit more expensive. Um, but I have a stack here of a bunch. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen books. Thirteen books to show you. I'm probably not gonna leave this hood on the entire time, um, but I am wearing this blanket from Emposia. They sent it along. It's just like a really cozy book pattern blanket. I'll show you the back. But uh, it is just the time of year when it's getting a little chillier. It's autumn, so I thought I would wear this new blanket. And it is absolutely perfect for this time of year when it goes back and forth between rainy and cold a lot. There's no AC in our apartment, so usually I just keep my window open. And sometimes that can lead to wide fluctuations in how warm the apartment is. So uh, yeah, this is just a super cozy soft blanket. And with that, we can jump into these books that I purchased at both locations. So first I have five books that I got at Value Village. Village. These were like the cheaper books and the funny thing is that when I got to the front I had four books I got to the checkout and they were like hey Did you know we're doing a buy four books get the fifth one free thing and I was like no So I went back and I grabbed another book that I got for free, which was fun um, I have already read two of these books. So I'll talk about those first um, I got a copy of Harry a history by Melissa Anelli. This is the true story of a boy wizard his fans and life inside the Harry Potter phenomenon I already own this book and then I got rid of it. Um, I had kind of a like unhealthy relationship thing where when I was going to move in with 
my ex, I was getting a lot of pressure to get rid of, like, everything I owned, which is not good. Um, like, it's good to get rid of things, but if your significant other is constantly pressuring you to get rid of everything you own in order to fit into their life, you know, like, maybe question that. I sure didn't. <laughs> um, but I got, ready, I got rid of my copy of Harry History, even though I really, really love this book. Uh, Melissa Anelli was the webmistress of the fan website The Leaky Cauldron, and this is a really fascinating book about the last couple of years during the publication of the Harry Potter books. Mostly it's about the phenomenon between like the sixth and seventh Harry Potter books. It's really great. It's a really lovable look at fandom. I highly recommend it. Uh, the other book I got that I already owned was Horns by Joe Hill. This is a copy where I read someone else's copy, I really loved it, and then I never got a copy of my own. So I saw it at Value Village and I got a copy, so now I own this. This is a book about a guy who wakes up one morning and he finds horns growing out of his head and he discovers that he suddenly has the ability to tell anyone in his town to act on their worst impulse and they just will without question and then it's also about something horrible that happened between him and two of his friends like a little while before that i think like a year yeah a year it's been a year since his friend was killed um and so you're also kind of reliving that and learning what happened there it's a really creepy book. I really like books about demon and angel mythology. I find stories about that in general really interesting, and this has some really cool, like, demonic, satanic stuff that it is looking into, um, so I really wanted my own copy. Maybe I'll reread it now at some point, because it's been a while. I also have An Appointment with Death. This is by Agatha Christie, um, and I don't know anything else about it besides the fact that it's an Agatha Christie mystery. Uh, this is a Poirot mystery who is, like, her most famous detective, and I have been collecting these editions of Agatha Christie books. I have three others right now, um, so I saw this one and I grabbed it. I don't know what the mystery is, just that Poirot will be solving a mystery, which I'm always a fan of. Um, when I was at Half Price Books, I had to really calm down, because they had, like, eight different books of these editions there and I had already bought one that night so I was like no you can't do it but I will definitely be going back to half price books to get some other copies of Agatha Christie books of this um Black Dog and Leventhal Publishers editions because right now I only have blue and pink ones and there were like yellow and green ones at half price books I don't know anyway I'll find out what this is about when I actually read it but I really love Agatha Christie so I wanted another copy of one of her books to read. And then I have two books I know even less about. Uh, the first is The Book of Speculation by Erica Swyler. This I grabbed because it's got books on the cover. I love books about books. I love books about bookish people. So that's why I grabbed it. But then after I picked it up, I found out it's a signed copy. See where it says signed copy? Um, on the inside. There it is. I thought that was really cool. I thought that made it worth it. I love finding signed books in like used bookstores. So this is kind of about books, but it's also about a curse where the main character receives this book that details a bunch of doomed lovers who were like mermaids in the circus who died um, just like the main character's mother did. So I have no idea. I love books about books. So I got it. Um, I also got a creepy book, In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. I have never read a w Ruth Ware book. I like tentatively like adult like suspense thriller books, but I don't read that many because I've had more misses than hits, you know? And in all honesty, no matter where I look in this book, it doesn't have a description, which is probably good, but like I, I kind of wish it had some kind of description. I know that the first beginning bit, there's some quotes that are from a traditional Halloween tale and that Ruth Ware writes thrillers, but I think I remember this one being kind of a creepier book. Yeah, prepare to be scared, really scared, according to Reese Witherspoon. Um, and that's what I'm after right now. I'm after autumnal books, which usually means spooky or suspenseful books. So maybe we'll find out if I like Ruth Ware or not. Maybe I can read her newer book, uh, The Death of Mrs. Westaway, I think, if I like this. Um, I just think it seems like a perfect October or November read. Now I have a lot more books from Half Price Books. So, 
let's talk about the ones I've already read first. So we have Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. Gillian Flynn is one of my absolute favorite authors. She's written some of my favorite books. She wrote Gone Girl, which is one of my favorite books of all time, to the point that like it inspired my honors thesis when I was graduating college, so I really, really love Gillian Flynn. Um, I've already read Dark Places, but this was the only one left of Gillian Flynn's books that I didn't own that I really wanted to own. So now I have the full set of this, Gone Girl, and Sharp Objects. Uh, this is about a girl named Libby who, when she was seven years old, she witnessed, like, the brutal murder of her mother and her two sisters, and she testified that it was her teenage brother, and then, now that she's an adult, this group of people who is obsessed with murders come forward and they tell her that she must have had it wrong and it kind of reopens this horrific past for her and she has to find out if she really did doom her brother to like decades in prison because she was wrong when she was seven years old. Um, they died in a really- her mother and sisters died in a really brutal way. This is a very dark book just like all of Gilly and Flynn's books but I absolutely love it. It is my least favorite of all of Flynn's books, but it's still got like a solid four star. So I'm glad to have owned this. I've completed the Gillian Flynn novel collection now. The other book that I've already read is Fun Home, a family tragicomic. Uh, this is by Alison Bechdel. I read Fun Home in college for a course on like modern women writers and I read it right before I went and saw previews for the Broadway musical Fun Home when it was brand new. I really love Alison Bechdel. I really, really liked Fun Home, and this was a case of I got the book from school and I had a policy of returning all of my school books at the end of a semester, so I did, even though I probably should have just, like, purchased the copy. Uh, this is a graphic memoir about Alison's life, um, post coming out and also dealing with her father's death after she finds out that he was gay and she never knew, or at least he had interest in boys and she never knew. Um, it's really tragic, but I absolutely love it. And I wanted a chance to own it so that I can reread it over and over again. Another book that I don't know a ton about, but I was interested in, I have The Child Finder. This is by Renee Denfeld. I recognized this name because this author had a book that was really popular when I first started watching booktube, The Enchanted. Um, which was like this weird fabulous book that I decided wasn't for me, but I recognized the name. Um, so according to the back it's a literary page turner, which I think just means literary thriller, and it is about a girl who goes missing and the family turns to an investigator who's really good at finding lost children because at one point she too was a lost girl. So it's a detective story, but it's also about missing kids, and again this just felt like a perfect autumn winter read. Also it was on clearance, so it was only three dollars. Um, I have a few other books that were only three dollars, such as The Great Glowing Coils of the Universe, which is the Welcome to Night Vale podcast episodes volume two by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. Now I really need to get volume one, the first collection of episodes, because I listened to Welcome to Night Vale for a number of years, but I have a really hard time listening to stuff that I don't have, like, a visual reference for, so I stopped listening to the podcast. So I really wanted to collect the written versions so I can kind of catch up, get back into that world, and this was on clearance for $3. So I grabbed a copy, and it's going to motivate me to grab um, the episodes volume one and get back into this world of Welcome to Night Vale. I can read the Welcome to Night Vale um, novel also by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. This is a series about a town in the middle of the desert. It is a radio show hosted by a mysterious dude named Cecil. Kind of just narrates everything that is going on in the town. It's really weird and magical and like kind of fucked up though. And then uh, in one of the like first episodes, the first episode, this scientist Carlos shows up in town to kind of investigate the weirdness of Night Vale and Cecil immediately falls head over heels in love with him because he's Carlos the Scientist with a beautiful hair. It's an absolutely fantastic podcast and I'm really excited to get back into the story of it. The last one that I grabbed that was on clearance I don't know that much about and it is Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff. I just know that this was a literary fiction book I was really interested in reading at some point. Um, I think part of it is set in college. Um, so it is a portrait of one extraordinary couple over the course of 24 years. But apparently there is some kind of like late, later twist that adds some interest to that. 
Um, I've just always really loved this book cover. And I've been trying to get into more literary fiction and like adult fiction, so because I recognized it and I knew at one point I wanted to read it, it was three dollars on clearance, so I got a copy. And I don't know when I'm gonna read this, but it has a gorgeous cover, so I got it. And the last three books I got because all three of them are book of the month books. Um, I am a book of the month like YA affiliate, which means I receive the new YA book of the month books. Uh, I choose one every single month and they send it to me, but this half price books had so many book of the month books that I was really trying to control myself in choosing the best ones, but I would love to go back and collect more because I think the book of the month editions are absolutely gorgeous. So if you are a frequent like reader, a subscriber to YA book of the month, let me know some of your favorite picks down in the comments below and maybe I will go back to that half price books and find some of them because there were so many book of the month books at this half price box. I will say though that all three of these books, all three of these book of the month picks were already on my Goodreads TBR so they aren't completely out of nowhere. Um, the first one I have is The Veins of the Ocean by Patricia Engel. Um, this is one of the only book of the month books that's like a regular sized hardcover instead of the full size book of the month book, you know? It's just a little shorter. Um, I didn't know a ton about this, I just knew that at one point I wanted to read it so I grabbed one, but at the bottom it says set in the vibrant coastal communities of Miami, the Florida Keys, Havana, Cuba, and Cartagena, Colombia. Um, and I, I'm just like, I'm really interested in books set in those locations because they are locations I don't read about as often, so I saw this at the very end, this was the last book I grabbed, and it was also a book of the month book, so I picked it up. Literary fiction, I'm interested. Um, I also have Behold the Dreamers by Mbolo Mbue, I believe, and this one, again, I didn't know that much about it, I just recognized the cover as one that was on my Goodreads TBR. This is about two different marriages suffering from the collapse of the Lehman Brothers and uh, it's one of them is a like Cameroonian immigrant and his family and he is a chauffeur for this older white family and it's about these two marriages struggling through this difficult time. It's about this main character trying to make a place for himself in America with his family. I think it has a gorgeous cover. I'm totally obsessed with how vibrant this cover is and um, it was so funny because this still included like the note from Book of the Month which I thought was cool. Uh, the Veins of the Ocean didn't. It didn't have anything inside but this one and the last one did. It's got the gorgeous like Book of the Month logo on there and on the spine. Uh, and the last one I have is one I've actually been really excited to read, and that is um, The Power by Naomi Alderman. I originally heard about this book from Monica over at the booktube channel Monica Kim, who I love. I adore Monica, um, but she spent ages like raving about this book, and so I've been searching and searching for a copy of it. And then at Half Price Books, there was a paperback copy for $8.50, or this gorgeous book of the month copy for nine dollars. So 50 cents more for a big beautiful hardcover book of the month edition. So I got this. This is an interesting look at a world where all of a sudden this new power is um, inherited by people in the world but it is only given to women. Um, basically like with the flick of their fingers they have the ability to inflict pain or even death and it kind of totally upsets the power structure and balance of the world because all of a sudden all of the women in the world have this power that men don't. Um, I've been really interested in this. I'm hoping that it acknowledges like trans issues particularly well and hopefully non-binary folks, genderqueer folks, like I really hope this isn't as <sighs> just strictly about men and women as I'm worried it might be. I, I really hope that there is a lot to say in here. I don't think it's going to be an easy read, but I'm excited about it. Um, but this also came with like the original Book of the Month bookmark with the quote on the back and everything. And I thought that was pretty cool. So yeah, the power. I found it. I'm super, super thrilled and I can't wait to read it. And then I'm actually going to mention one more book uh, before we get to the end of this that I didn't purchase. It just literally showed up at my apartment. I don't know like where anyone involved got my address. <laughs> 
I send my address to a lot of publishers, so it probably just got passed around, but it showed up at my apartment the same day that I went book shopping for all this stuff, so I thought I would show you. It is called Quantum by Patricia Cornwell. Um, it is a Captain Chase novel. Don't know what that means, but it is a sci-fi book, and it is about this main character who finds a tripped alarm in, like, the tunnels below NASA, and so she's investigating, and things keep getting more and more intense, and more and more clues keep leading to the main character's sister who's been missing for a few days. I have no idea. This just showed up, but it sounded interesting enough that I'm probably gonna keep this copy around and maybe read it someday. It also has this really cool cover. That I think is gorgeous. So yeah, I thought I'd just tack this on to the end <laughs> because I don't really know where else to put this except a main book haul, but I don't know when I'm gonna do one of those next. So also got Quantum. That is all 13 books, um, including Quantum, that I got yesterday or two days ago. It's actually been two days since I went book shopping. It's fine. Um, what did you think of all of these book purchases? There are no YA books here, which I didn't realize until I got home, but I thought it was really interesting because I walked through the YA sections of both Value Village and Half Price Books, and I didn't want to get a single one of them, so I wound up with absolutely no YA books, and that's kind of different for me. Um, if there are any of these books I haven't read yet that you've read, please let me know which ones I should focus on, which ones you think I'm going to find interesting. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little first journey into book shopping in the Pacific Northwest. There will be many, many more, I'm sure. Um, and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!